want to know what I was, was up to. I wrote a book, and it's entitled Victory in Iraq, How America Won. And I wrote it because we did win, and nobody knows it. Very few people know it. In fact, the, the guy that delivered the first couple thousand books to San Diego, the truck driver, said, what's in the boxes there, buddy? And I said, it's a book. He said, what's the title? I said, Victory in Iraq, How America Won. And he said, we did? And I, and I said, that's why I wrote the book. Uh, because, ladies and gentlemen, we won this thing in Iraq. Uh, we, we have established a government in a very tough part of the world that is holding. It's a representative government with lots of flaws and lots of problems. And by golly, they elect their leadership. We built a military from the ground up that is able to protect that government. Our, our Marines and our, and our soldiers, our Army personnel, and, and, uh, and some of our Navy personnel worked on building that military. It's holding, it's protecting that government. And the government is a friend, not an enemy of the United States, which it used to be in the old days. And it is no longer a sponsoring ground for terrorism around the world, which is a major, major uh, of criticality to this country, a major, major and important foreign policy element for us in that piece of the world. So, and I knew a lot of the people that participated in the war. And incidentally, I, I know you had Duncan uh, uh, talk to you last night, but I'll never forget, uh, the day after 9-11, he was working in a, in a high-tech industry here in San Diego. In fact, I met his buddy, the guy that was working in the same office with him. He said, I, he said, uh, he said, Mr. Hunter, I remember your son walked in the day after 9-11, back at work, and he said, I'm going to see the boss, I'm quitting, and I'm going to join the Marine Corps. And he did. He went in, quit his job, walked across the street, joined the U.S. Marines, and said, let's go get him. And over the next five years, so, we, ran, uh, we did two tours in Iraq. He did one in, Af in Afghanistan. And i got to tell you a little story about uh, Afghanistan. And, uh, you know, when we went into Fallujah the first time, how many people remember when the contractors were murdered and hung on the bridge? Okay, that was that was March 31st, 2004. That was about a year after we'd gotten there. You know, you know, Afghan Iraq fell very quickly. We remember we took we took Baghdad in about 15 days. We started about 20, 19 days. We started on the 20th of March. We we pulled out. Of, we went over the line of Kuwait on the 20th of March, and on the 9th of April. Saddam's statue fell in the center of Baghdad. In fact, remember the famous picture with one of the great heroes of all time, Nick Papadik, our own guy. <laughs> remember that picture where he's smoking a cigar in the turret of a tank and the, and the statue's coming down behind him? That's a famous AP photo. That was the 9th of April. So we took Baghdad in about 19 days. But what, was, what happened after we took Baghdad was this. The problem in Iraq was that you had 60% Shiites, 20% Sunni, and they were a little more of, of feisty than the cowboys and the Indians. Uh, the Sunnis controlled Iraq. That was Saddam Hussein's tribe. They had the guns and they had the military expertise, expertise and they held Saddam Hussein as one of their own. So they dominated Iraq with 20% of the population. Here came the Americans with this new idea that we were going to have one man, one vote. We were going to install a representative government in this, uh, in this country. And the Sunnis could do the math. With 20% of the population, they knew that they were no longer going to be the dominant force in Iraq. So in the, in the last, later stages of 2004, we started to see uh, little firefights bubble up in the Sunni areas and a few in the Shiite areas, but mainly the Sunni areas where they were pushing back Guess what they now saw as an emerging Sunni dominance. And it all culminated, that, that bubbling of violence culminated on the 31st of March 2004 when they hung our contractors in Fallujah. What happened? Those were four uh, guys working for Blackwater. They were on security detail. Instead of going around Fallujah, which they had been instructed to do, because Fallujah was a tough town out in western Iraq. Western Iraq is Sunni. And our problems. They went through the middle of the city. The bad guys heard they were coming. They
They jammed them into traffic. The traffic was, was real heavy, the traffic, and, the, and it was very slow, downtown Fallujah. These guys came in with cars, jammed them, and machine gunned them with AK-47s. And as you know, then the mob tore them, they dragged them, they burned them, they hung them on the bridge. And it was interesting, the Marines said, don't attack Fallujah because of this. They said, go get the guys that killed them in a surgical operation and kill all of them, but don't just attack the Sunni population. Otherwise, they're going to do what these insurgents want, which is to polarize the Sunnis against the Americans. But uh, Ambassador Brimmer wanted a full-scale uh, onslaught with respect to Fallujah. He wanted a sweep. He got his blood up because he saw all the pictures. I think Americans felt that they, they want to strike back. And so we sent in two battalions. In fact, uh, Gunny Nick Papadets was in one of those guys. And for those people who don't know it, he actually attacked in Fallujah one day before the rest of the battalion. He came in to, to at the request of Fox Company to save a Marine who was down in the street. The day before the attack began, we had a Marine recon operation, and one Marine was wounded. He was in the street, and we couldn't retrieve him. The fire was too intense. So they called up Papadich, and Papadich went in with his tank, saved the guy. And then he said to himself, I'm a tank commander, I got a full load of ammo, got the enemy in front of me, they're firing at me, the rest of the battalion attacks tomorrow, I'm attacking today. <laughs> and he kept on going. And Papadich actually fought halfway through Fallujah. He got to Avenue, Michigan, which is the avenue that goes over the bridge where the guys were hung over the Euphrates, before he ran out of ammo. He ran out of ammo at 4 o'clock in the morning. He killed hundreds of insurgents. And he was up there, you know, out of his tank, exposed all the time. He had he had RPGs and AK bullets bouncing off the tank. He came back, got more ammo, got back into the fight the next morning, went back in, and they got him. They finally hit him uh, at about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning with an RPG, and of course that got his eye. And uh, and pretty soon he's on the way to line school, Germany. But that started the attack in Fallujah. So the other battalions came, came in. We swept halfway through Fallujah. And, uh, and Duncan was in the one of the infantry units that went in. He was a forward observer for the artillery. And he was called in artillery fire, so he went in with the infantry. Well, the Sunni started complaining to Ambassador Bremer, saying, we got, you're, you're brutalizing the Sunnis, you've got to stop the attack. And we did something that was really stupid. Bremer ordered the Marines to stop attacking. They were halfway through the city, they'd taken several Marines killed, and we stopped. We had the enemy rolling back in front of us. They were all disorganized. We stopped the attack in Fallujah. How many folks remember that? That was early, early 2004. The bad guys reorganized, and the bad guys started hitting the Marines now in their fixed position. Well, one, only one Marine officer <laughs> called up and beat up on the chairman of the Armed Services Committee when that happened. <laughs> I'm chairing, a, I'm chairing a committee meeting, and a staff member comes over and says, your son's on the, on the phone. I said, that's not, that's not possible. I said, he's on the satellite cell phone in the middle of the Battle of Fallujah. He wants to talk to you right now. I said, okay. I go over, I get the phone, and I said, let me tell you, Duncan had some mean words for government in general and all politicians. He essentially said, what in the devil are you doing? I said, we're halfway through the city, we've taken four KIA, and you stop us. I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I said, they said, we've been given the order to stop the attack. So I said, call me in two hours. I called the Pentagon. The Pentagon called back and said, well, we've had a pause in the fight, but we'll resume it soon. So Duncan called back and I said, uh, I said, uh, there's been a pause in the fight. I said, we're, we're going we're gonna to keep the cordon in place. He said, Dad, I'm the cordon. He said, the cordon's gone. We pull all the Marines back. He said, you could hear that getting a straight line from the Pentagon. Well, what had happened is Bremer had, had ordered the attack stop. Massive mistake. And we didn't take Fallujah then until November after the election. So in April, we stopped it. In November, we went in and we killed every Al-Qaeda who didn't surrender to get out of Dodge. We did that seven months later in November. But what happened when, when Fallujah <coughs> There weren't a lot of Al-Qaeda in Iraq, but they came flocking into Iraq and flocking into Fallujah because the Arab press was telling the world that the United States Marines had been beaten by the insurgents. They switched from saying that the, the Marines are brutalizing the, the Sunni population to the insurgents just beat the Marines. So you had Al-Qaeda